Hi, I'm Glyn Dewis. Welcome to episode 51. And this week, if you're into compositing, I've got a really cool way that you can use the luminosity blend mode to really add realism into your pictures. Okay, so like I said, this is a very, very quick tutorial, but it's it's one that I thought of while I'm putting together this picture that you can see on screen now. And this is a another addition to my animals project where I'm taking pictures of animals uh, that are in captivity, like wildlife parks, zoos, safari parks, and then using Photoshop to put them out in the wild or we'll make it actually look like they're out in the wild. And what I wanna show you is just this little bit down the bottom just here where we've got this uh, little bit of a uh, watering hole or a bit of a puddle in the field because that wasn't originally there. If I just show you on the layers panel here, uh, as I sort of take it down, we can go through and see what we've got here. You can see that that watering hole wasn't originally there. And in fact, neither was this actual mud and stuff on the field as well. But it's this watering hole here that I want to show you because it does bring in just a couple of techniques that are really, really useful when it does uh, come to your compositing. So what we've actually got is I've got two uh, files. Let's just get rid of the layers panel just for a second. So press shift and tab and that'll hide them out of the way just for now. So we've got this picture here. I actually posted this on Facebook. Not the most exciting picture, but it just goes to show that when I am out and about, I've always got my camera with me and I'm always looking for little odds and sods, little pictures of fields, uh, textures, uh, puddles, clouds, you name it. I just keep collecting them because you never know when they're gonna come in handy. So we've got this puddle here and I've got this little field here, which is one that I'm gonna be using later on in that composite of the elephants. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you how we can actually make it look as if this field has got that puddle in, but there are a couple of little things you can do to make it uh, much more realistic. So first things, uh, first things first then, we'll go over to the puddle here and I'm just gonna get my freehand lasso tool and I'm just gonna draw a very, very rough selection around the puddle, keeping in some of that wet area just there, circle it around and join them together. So now we can see the marching ants. Then I'm going to come over and get my move tool and I'll click and drag it off that picture and drop it into the field here. So straight away you can see that it doesn't, uh, doesn't match in, the colour's wrong and also the perspective is wrong. So the first thing I'm going to do is alter the perspective and that's really easy to do. I'm going to go to edit and free transform. And this is where we've got the transform handles where we can make things bigger and smaller. But you can also play tricks with the eye by making it look as if it's been taken at a different angle. So if I push the bottom one up, it's almost like it's been taken at a much more lower angle, kind of like photographing across that bit of water, as opposed to almost looking, sort of looking downwards towards it. So I'll tend to do this to try and match the angle of the field so everything seems to look uh, natural as if it really was there. We can also right click within here, we get loads of options, we've got one called perspective, and this is where we can kind of stretch it out so that the bottom, which would be nearer the camera, is slightly bigger. And we can play around with this just again to change the angle, change the perspective so that everything kind of matches in. So we'll go for something like that, and I might actually right click in there again, go to free transform, I'm just gonna hold down my alt or option key and click on the outer one here and just drag them so both of the outer ones come in at the same kind of proportions just to make it just a little bit smaller. Okay, so that's where we want it there. So we'll put a little tick at the top to commit it. I now want to kind of blend it into the field. So let's just bring up our layers here. So on the layer that contains the actual puddle, I'm just gonna add a white layer mask. So it's white, which means we can see it. So then I'm gonna get a brush and just a simple soft edged brush. And I'll just make sure there's no settings in there, which there aren't. And then I'm just gonna come over and I'm just gonna sort of paint away just so it kind of blends in just a little bit more. So I wanna keep some of that moist area there so it does look like it's kind of spilled over the edge into the field. And I'm just gonna paint away this green area just down here and something like that. Nice soft edge brush will help things to naturally blend in as opposed to using a hard edge brush which won't let things kind of bleed in and blend much more naturally. So something like that.
So the next thing we're going to do, at the moment it's definitely brighter than the remaining field, so I'm going to click on the thumbnail of the actual uh, puddle, then I'm going to go to Image, Adjustments, and we'll go for a Levels Adjustment. And all I'm going to do here is darken it down using this bottom output levels here. I find this a much more natural way of darkening things down. So you might have seen that in a, in a video that I did showing how to create a sunset and shadows on the floor. So I'm going to grab the white point here and drag that in. And as I do that you'll notice over here that the actual outer part of the puddle here and the puddle itself are getting a little bit darker something like that and we just need to add a bit more contrast in there so I'll do that by grabbing, grabbing the mid-tone slider and bringing that over to the right hand side so that's starting to look certainly a lot more realistic maybe not quite so dark something around about there then we'll click OK let me just turn that uh, on and off so it's looking that's looking fairly good so far now the only problem with this now is that I mean, I'm going to be adding in a new sky at, uh, at some point during this retouch, but the original sky that's been reflected into the puddle here definitely doesn't match the one above it. And it doesn't match the field that it's in. This field is quite muddy, so the puddle would need to have that kind of muddy look to it as well. So you'd ordinarily think that, well, we just need to do some kind of a, a color adjustment here. And you could do something like maybe a hue and saturation uh, adjustment, and then just add a clipping mask, this little icon right at the bottom here just so it affects only the puddle directly below it and this is when you'd maybe click on colorize and you could play around in here but I think to do this that's quite difficult to get it to look just right so as I'm kind of like playing around with the sliders here adjusting the saturation the lightness and the darkness the real problem here is that we're actually affecting the look of the water so let's just delete that there and get rid of it so when we look at, uh, in fact, we'll just delete that as well, and yes. So now we've got no adjustment there whatsoever, and we can drag that out the way. Now, when we look at the water, what is it about that water, or that picture there, that makes us know that's water? Well, it's the reflections, the highlights, the shadows, the whole kind of texture. The luminance values of that lets us know it's water, and it feels kind of wet. So really all I want is to retain that, that um, kind of look of water, but I want the rest of it and the water itself to take on the look of the environment that it's in. And we can do that really, really easily with one click, and it's just a blend mode. So when I'm clicked on this layer containing the water, I'm gonna to go to the blend modes at the top of the layers panel where it says normal, and right at the bottom, I'm gonna choose one called luminosity. And look at the water when I click on this. I'm gonna click on luminosity, and bang. Straight away, we can see that it's still water, but now it really has started to blend in with the environment and it's got that muddy, watery feel, which is what I want, especially for this picture with the elephants in. So let's just go back here from luminosity to normal, which, you know, if you had a really bright blue sky there and you didn't want the water to be muddy, it would work, it would look fine. But when we're looking to take our compositing to another level, which is something I tend to say quite a lot, but it's the small things to really make it kind of work, little things like using the luminosity blend mode there, where the water now takes on the color of the environment, but the luminance values so that we know that still water remain and it makes it much, much more realistic. So we turn it on and off, what's off and on. And the real trick with something like this is to look away from the screen, then look back and kind of see then how does it look or get somebody else to have a quick look at it and don't tell them that you've done this and just ask them, well, no, what do you think of that field there? And let's see if they kind of notice that straight away that, oh, that doesn't look quite real. But I think that works really well. So I thought while I'm going through making this picture here of these uh, elephants, let's just turn those all on there. I thought I'd kind of show you some of the process I'm going through to make this picture here. Now, just so that you know, this picture is going to end up being, let's just double click on the hand tool so you can see. In fact, let's just zoom out just a touch as well. This is going to be made so it looks like these two elephants, the, the adult and the baby, have walked for miles and miles and miles. And the only bit of water they've found is this one here. And I'm going to get that done over the next couple of days, and I'll then share it across my social media. But uh, there you go. That's a, a very quick one for this week. 
Okay, so there you go. Like I said, a really, really quick tutorial, but it's those little things that can actually, like I said again, uh, take your pictures to another level. It really does help to add to the realism, and it is those small things that can make the big difference in your retouching. The luminosity blend mode is one that I use quite a lot, and I'll be able to show you in future tutorials how uh, I make use of that in other ways as well. But if you want to practice this technique, if you haven't got a picture of a muddy puddle and a muddy field, what I'm going to do is if you check in the description, whether you're watching this on YouTube or on iTunes, take a look in the description. I'm going to add a link in there where you can download those two files. They're not the most exciting of files, but at least it'll allow you to, to practice it. But that's all for this week. Make sure if you like the video that you click on the little like button. If you've got any questions or comments, by all means, just drop a little comment in there in the comment section and I'll try and answer every single one. But for now, that's all I've got for you. Make sure you click on the subscribe button and I'll see you next week. Thank you.